Sorry, next question is a comment on the rat catchers incident. Ah, yes. Um, <clears throat> so what happened there? There's some old code in the rat catchers quest because you know these things were written in like 2006, 2007 by people not here anymore. And um, the way it was written with the staking in the rat pits was just not a safe piece of code. So people found ways of abusing it to generate free money out of nowhere. And we've tracked down a whole lot of people who've been doing it um, and banned them and their various mules and um, got people still chasing up more mule accounts that have been receiving wealth from that. Um, naturally, I disabled the rat pits temporarily while we worked on a proper fix. They're still disabled at the moment, but um, I um, spent a bit of that yesterday evening writing the staking system a little differently in a way that shouldn't be able to generate free money out of thin air because you know, it's not that hard. Um, trading system manages it. So um, hopefully we um, will be able to reinstate the rat pits on Monday alongside the GE slot update that's coming out around then. Uh, and you'll have the rat pits back, hopefully without the duping bug, mm. for those of you who use it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> T TLDR, yeah. bug, we found out about it, we fixed it, we banned all the accounts involved, these things happen. You know. They to the yeah, for anybody yes, yeah. who might not have caught the first question, uh, I was probably going to cut that out in the YouTube highlight. Um, can we get I'll do it again. Yeah. Australian servers, you've been asking a lot about Australian servers. As a lot of the Australians know, internet over there is very difficult, and from a commercial point of view, it's even more difficult. Um, we need, as a company, to look at how we deal with Australia as a whole. We need to get some proper solutions in there, because what I can offer you now for Australia is just not good enough to, to work. Um, so we're going to look at it as a company, how we can deal with it. It's going to take time to get it out there. It's been going on for a while already, but there is no Australian service coming from old school anytime soon. But we hopefully we will have a good service to you out there at some point, but we need to do it properly. There you go. All right. Yeah. Cool. That was a lot, lot, lot more succinct than and, uh, and, and the first time round anyway. Yeah, yeah. much better. All right, we got a third time. You can <laughs> I think I can do Australian servers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why we do live streams if we're so much better if we recorded. <laughs> okay. Uh, first actual question from uh, Diamante. Diam Diamant. Let's just say that. Um, when will we get to see XP drops? Ah, got started on that um, last week when I had a spare evening. Sadly, didn't get very far. And it's not a small job, which is why we haven't got it out before. Um, so, got to start. Got a long way to go. Sadly, I've had to put it on hold due to other jobs that needed doing in the meantime, including the rat pits thing. <laughs> so um, I look forward to finishing that one. Yeah. For what it's worth, although the um, blog didn't mention it explicitly, um, along with the ability to see a progress bar to see how close you are to your next level up for each skill, I'd like to include the ability to change it to show progress towards a goal that you set yourself for each skill. Because I think that would be nice to have. And since you're doing a progress bar to your next level up, we may as well give you the option to customise it anyway. Right. And we're cool. excited with what you've shown us so far. We've had a little Ooh. sneak in the mm. office. Yeah, I only saw a tiny little glimpse, but it looked really good. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I know, I'd definitely use it, so. Mm. Thanks. I'm trying to make it pretty customisable, so I was showing off how you can put it on the left of the screen, right of the screen, middle of the screen, change the size a bit as well, um, just to try and cover whatever the player's trying to do. Get into Roman numerals? I have not tried hilarious. to do that. <laughs> that would be odd. <laughs> I'm not doing that. No. <laughs> it's, right. it's helpful if the numbers can be really thin and narrow. How about Roman if we do it? not good for that. How about we do it in binary? Ooh, that would be quite cool. Album. I think you'd be the only person to use that. <laughs> I don't know. These guys like that. But I remember when uh, I was looking up the PMOD team years ago, we used to have a uh, binary thread where people would write messages in binary to each other, and okay. they loved it. I don't know why, it seemed a bit odd to me, but they enjoyed it. Well, but they gave them Roman numerals for their bank tabs all that mm. time ago. I can't remember who asked for it, but since I was giving them options, I think that was an easy one. Mm. But I'm not doing the whole thing for XP drops. Yeah, binary yeah. real riot, yeah. Seems, they seem to like binary. Say <laughs> two. <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> let's go to the next question. Well. Um, no one asks, when the music cape's released, uh, will we have the ability to trim it? No one asked that, you say. That's, that's the name, N01. Ah, oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> oh, um, we didn't have anything immediately in mind for how to trim it or what a trimmed one would signify. Mm -hmm. um, we're open to polling 
more stuff like that in the future? Was it if someone's got an idea for what would trim it and what it would mean that it was trimmed? Um, in discussion with it in the in the quest keep doing something together. Could make sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Some uh, discussion going in the chat. Um, so just something to say. I was just going to say, are people up for the music cape now? Yeah. Last time I heard they weren't, because there's the quest cape. Well, they both have the music cape. cape. Oh, yeah. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah. Where have you been? Uh, <laughs> my, my finger has Ooh, the pulse. Shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> no. Gareth put me last week. I'm going to get him back. You um, didn't make the thing, didn't you? Um, I no, I didn't make it myself. Oh, right. no, no, it's not been made yet. Because I thought it didn't need to be made. <laughs> <laughs> the amount, though. Um, all right, next question. Actually, a follow-up to that from Mr. Soften, who asks, will Iron Man be able to unlock the Trawler music track with the release of the music cape? Uh, yeah, I think we'll allow that. It would be a bit harsh if we said they weren't allowed to. And besides, we let them bypass the diary tasks for the Trawler so that they weren't just barred from ever completing that diary, I think. Yep. So we can make the music available to them in the same way. I think that's fair. A more pressing question is actually people with holiday event tracks. Mm. Um, because all the holiday event tracks are made available at the next holiday event. The thing is, in the case of Easter, um, that's quite a few months away. And um, it would be a little bit mean if we said you can't have a music cape if you haven't unlocked all the Easter tracks until next April. So I think we were, I think we'll have no trouble making it check for all the tracks excluding the holiday ones. Okay. Could maybe right. even make them disappear off the interface if, until they until they become available again to you. That should make people happy. That's nice of functionality. What? I think I'm missing I just saw, saw the comment about, my Archie's socks don't match. Oh. I like, I like the I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm the only one that wears shorts. It's stupidly hot out. I don't care. I'm going to wear shorts. No, I just don't think they, they thought you were wearing nothing because your paper was covering it. Uh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's even his better. House, how he chooses to um, <laughs> behave in his house is entirely his business. Okay. I was in a meeting earlier and we were talking about some new caps that might be going to the merch store soon. And I said, oh, we've got a cap. You can wear it on the stream. And I was like, well, can I just wear just the cap? Maybe that would work. Just the cap. Yeah. It's a great but I, I, didn't, I, didn't think, I didn't think that would go down well, so I decided not to do that. Want to swap places? <laughs> I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. It's not um, one of those caps with the head, red bar, hit green bar, is it? No, it was a different sort of thing. Oh. Yeah. Before we get the thread saying, Mud Archie only asked four questions this stream, <laughs> let's go to um, uh, let's go to this one from Nabrowski, <laughs> who asks. Can the Achievement Diary Cape have the same bonuses and function as the Arty Cloak 4? That would make sense since you need to have an Arty Cloak 4 to be able to have an mm. Achievement Cape. Do you want some help? <laughs> what you do? I'm really sorry. I just need some water. It's too hot. I'm sweating. It yeah, it would make sense. You're quite right. Okay. Um, it's for the teleport, is that right? The teleports are the things and the, that... the bonuses of the cape yeah. as well, yeah. It's got pretty good stats now, yeah. hasn't it? Yeah. Um, well, we'll see what the chat thinks once. <laughs> once they've calmed down. They yeah. got distracted by this uh, water. God, so easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's the way you drink it. Uh, they've been watching me drinking tea for years, so they've never seen a performance like that before. Yeah, my hands are really sweaty. Just like I said, it's really hot. All right. Yeah. Uh, okay, so next question. Um, Cocolio asks, can we have a combat level filter um, being the ability to automatically ignore players under a certain combat level? <laughs> Which we uh, kind of discussed earlier, and we we talked about how um, total level worlds would pretty much be the best way to avoid this. If we uh, went, people keep asking us to do total level worlds and other restricted worlds, so that they and the people they respect can be free from the presence of all the people they don't respect. Gun off the internet sometimes, Um, and that would certainly cut down the complaints of I'm standing here and I can hear people talking that I consider beneath me, which I think is what that question's all about. Um, trying to do it directly as a player suggested though is a bit harder because at the moment the chat system doesn't bother knowing your combat level mm. or trying to do anything based on your combat level, it just knows who you are and who you're ignoring. Um, so having the chat system updated to know about combat levels and would require RS3 to be updated as well because we share the chat system for obvious reasons. Mm. And their combat levels were a little different to ours, what with their combat being evolved. So. Um, I think it might be easier if we went down the route of trying to split the players into worlds with restrictions, because yeah. there's a lot of requests for that anyway. And uh, level three skillers would feel a little left out and muted. 
well, I'm sure the player in question wanted exactly that. <laughs> okay. Um, next question is from Hanshi, who asks, can we see world broadcasts pulled soon? Broadcast in what? The loot drops? Yeah. And um, I would imagine this would also consider, um, like, reaching level 99, 200 million you know, stat, etc. Mm. Um, I don't know. I mean, do people want that? I mean, I... There is so an awful that's lot what of polls for. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, there is. Uh, I sort of sit there and I think people don't always want to be bombarded by messages. We've seen that with the uh, filters that we set up for the game filters, and uh, I mean, especially the in-game broadcasts that we do. We do them very rarely because we're very sensitive that players don't want um, to be bombarded by these sort of messages. However. There is very good use for them. So, for example, um, it's going to be a really bad example, and the chat's going to hate me for this. But let's talk about streamers. And if streamers had the ability, or the big famous streamers had the ability to send out broadcasts um, across the world, it's very useful for them. However, we would need to uh, put something in place to players could actually almost opt in to what sort of broadcast yeah. they want to see. So, what's going through my mind is maybe a bigger broadcast system where you have whole load of different categories and you tick the ones you want to st see about. Yeah. For example, you might not want to see any, you don't tick any, job done. Yeah. You might want to see some from famous streamers, you might want to see some from upcoming streamers, you might want to see some from us, you might want to see some on what drops are coming in these different areas. So that's just a different way of using it. Okay. Like I said, they're not going to like me for it, but that's just sort of one of the thoughts I'm having. We could have a rule that you can only have your loop broadcast at all if you have opted in to see other people's loop broadcasts. So, um, if you're going to start, if you want to advertise your stuff over a broadcast, then you're going to be spammed mm. too, and anyone who doesn't opt into it won't see it. Although, there might be better ways we could spend our dev time. Yes, that's what I'm thinking too. Because anything like this is going to involve the engine team, because it's always blinking does. Mm. And I'd really rather ask them to do other stuff. I think what we should do is we should have a broadcast system, so whatever they type in the Twitch chat that appears in game to everybody. Yeah. So everyone can experience the Twitch chat and its positivity and uh, Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just gonna sit here eating cheese till you finish. <laughs> Realistically though, the ability to, to opt out of all of it completely um, should sell any concerns. Mm. So yes yeah, yeah. the question is how many take. people would opt out of it completely and um, whether it was actually worth doing at all for the person who's left. Fair point. Okay. Um, side topic, we discussed last week about broadcasts being just in the Barrows Tunnels mm -hmm. for anybody below and above. Um, John C. actually had an update on that. Oh, yeah. Um, so he answered this question for us, saying, I'm working on an achievements update designed including things like broadcasts, Max Cape, and more. Feel free to mention it, as I'll likely tweet it out soon and get the community involved on design. Um, as far as when it's pulled, I don't know. Ties into question 21 as well, which we will get to in the near future. Five, ten minutes-ish, we'll see. But um, there you go, some exciting stuff in there, so thanks, John. Okay, next question. I'm Steven asks, what are your thoughts on the idea of a drop, as he's suggesting the Kraken Tentacle, that could be attached to the Dragon Defender to bring it to a level 70 requirement with slightly upgraded stats? So a higher tier Dragon Defender that degrades over time. I'd be more interested in where you get it from. I think that's the sort of interesting thing, not necessarily the item itself, it's what, where you get the new item from. From a rare two-eyed cyclops. Yes, <laughs> it could be. I know. I know it's been a while, but I feel like the dragon defender just came out <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. Like, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Would the eyes be like that? Do you think? Well, oh, we're yeah. doing it. Uh, or we could oh, just one at the front, one, one at the back. Yeah. Oh, that would be cool. And a beam that. Because you wouldn't know it had two eyes if you saw it only from the front. Hmm. Okay. So we managed to completely kibosh that question yeah. from a new item into a two-eyed cyclops. <laughs> this, this is interesting, though, because this is one of those examples that will do really well on Reddit, for example, but mm. not nearly so well in the Twitch chat. Mm. Um, so different communities have different answers, yeah. for sure. Um, it's certainly yeah. something we can do. Yeah. yeah. Somebody had an idea a long time ago, I think it was Mod Mark, for a quest where there's a lonely cyclops standing on the shore. And in the distance, across the sea, he can see on the distant shore what he thinks is a lovely Cyclops maiden standing there winking at him. And the player investigates to find out it's in fact a lighthouse. Okay. Um, I just wanted to get that out there. I think that's good. You were right. quite blunt on that one. Okay. I was, I was expecting something else, to be honest. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, right, next question. Class asks, uh, when will we get to see the ancient slash lunar altars being added for player-owned houses? You like your construction. 
Well, this was, was part of um, John C's th mm. um, idea that was all over the forums. Quite popular on the forums, it mm. was. Um, which was in pr pretty finalised state, if I remember rightly. Yeah. So, I mean, I'd love to work on it when I get a chance. Mm. So, and we've got, a, chance. we've got a meeting tomorrow. We're all going away for the day to uh, plan the next nine months or so of content. I would imagine that will probably be raised up in there. Mm. So we might even have a better idea because we've got to have the meeting tomorrow then I've got to take it past the senior managers make sure they're all right with it and then we'll probably come to you with it after that so end of next week beginning of the week after. Also it helps Imagine. that all the stuff from the last priority poll a long time ago um, in, you know there was a whole lot of stuff on it including Slayer updates and we've now got to the point of polling Slayer updates which mm. we are imminently going to start developing to deliver for you because you know we promised um, but We've got the most recent priority poll, which shows quite a lot of support for skilling updates, especially mm, high-level yeah, skilling yeah. updates. So that leads very nicely to the idea of doing stuff with construction. Yeah, yes, indeed, I'm definitely yeah. excited to do it. It's just, yeah. I don't know many people who are excited to get into the POH code. I really don't. I have a niche. Um, speaking of the priority poll, we'll get to that shortly. Um, <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm just laughing at the chat, sorry. Uh, now you've acknowledged it's going to happen more. Um, <laughs> <laughs> next, next question. This one was surprisingly, believe it or not, this was very widely suggested uh, for quite some time now. So we're just we're just going to do it. Um, can you allow players to set a period of time in which they wouldn't be allowed to stake? So they speak to an NPC. I don't want to stake for the next two weeks. And you know, should they have the urge to go there and try to get cleaned, it wouldn't happen. As long as they can't back out of it, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah. Because we were discussing this earlier. Yeah. Like if we said you've got the option of blocking yourself from doing something and a player does it or gets hijacked and gets set into this state, um, then they come crying to us. Um, or if they just change their mind, like often happens with permanent Iron Men. Yeah. So, um, but I like this idea the player said of letting, of the player specifying a duration. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if you do choose it and change your mind, it will expire by itself. And we said we'd put it behind a bank pin. Yes, so you, if a hijacker does get on your account, they'd need to work out your pin before they can do this to you. Okay, so so there wouldn't be a way to undo this change, though, for the entire week, let's say. Well, the support team is unlikely to be able to um, take requests from players who write in saying, hi, I made this choice, I'd like to unmake the choice, please. <laughs> and they'd have to have some way of overriding it, which involves more tech work, mm -hmm. probably for the web team, even that one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Tools team. Yeah, okay. well, I can't see us going there. No. Genuinely surprised with this one. I would like to see it in a straw poll because the chat also seems for it. Um, so we're going to ask our straw poll guy if we can throw that in, asking, um, "Would you like the ability to set a period of time in which you would not be allowed to stake? So no access to the duel arena." Well, we could let them go to the duel arena and not stake because it's okay. always staking they talk about, not dueling. Yeah, so yeah. just not risk anything. Interesting, don't know how many people would use it as well. Okay. I probably would, and I would just set a cap of like five years. Like, bah. never, 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 t never tempt yourself. I think you might not go quite that far with it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, if the thing's not going to have a way of backing out and you're stuck with it, then maybe a week is enough for the moment. All right. Is this setting your own personal time? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you set yourself, say, a week, maybe it's two weeks. Say, I don't want to stay for this period, don't let me do it. Yeah. It's a funny thing for you guys to ask us to do, because in theory you're in control already and you can just not stake for a week. But um, people ask for this anyway, so we may as well explore it. Okay. And while the straw poll's running, I'll eat cheese. <laughs> All right. Lovely cheese, by the way. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoy it. Yeah. Next question. Um, user asks, will we ever get something similar to the companion app that RuneScape has? Or RS3? Probably not, I don't think. Um, benefits from it are not worth us spending the time on it, really, I think. It would be a very time-consuming yeah. project. We would have to bring somebody new in to do it as well, because we don't have the skills in the uh, team to do it. So we have to employ or outsource or, or something to make have one made. Um, I mean, it would be quite nice if the community made one. We could certainly support a community made one. Okay. That would be quite good. Um, but I think as for us producing <coughs> one ourselves, I can't see that happening. If it were a community made one, <coughs> pardon the cheese, um, we might run into difficulties if it was going to try and you know, use your credentials to edit your GE offers, which mm. is something that apparently 
most RS3 people using the app yeah. do it for the GE to right. set up trades. So we might have some difficulty there, but mm. yeah, we shall see. Okay. Yeah. Um, we have the results back from that straw poll. Would you like the ability to stop yourself from staking for a period of time? Which is passing by 64. 64%. Yeah. yeah. I was expecting higher from that reaction. Reasonable support. Um, of course, there's a lot of other things people ask for as well that might have a little more benefit. Mm. Mm. But okay. we can do it. All right. Well, that's, that's a very interesting result. Uh, next question. Jube asks, could we see a balloon animal pet as a rare reward from Scape Rune? He, believe it or not, he is not the only one to ask for more content added to Scape Rune. Yeah. It'd be quite cool, I suppose, wouldn't it? I mean, you can't make it too... I mean, players don't like lots of pets running around, so it's going to have to be quite difficult to get. Mm -hmm. um, Completely unheard of, a, a pet from a random event. Maybe we can do a, a balloon animal boss. <laughs> <laughs> Which and it's vulnerable to stab, is it? <laughs> <laughs> you get the stars to say that with a straight face. Yeah. Uh, which um, animal would it be? Um, there's be there's like a little cat one. You'd one of each, couldn't you? Yeah. There's four shapes of balloon animal at the moment. Um, I wouldn't care to say they look like anything particular. Mm -hmm. I mean, they look. one of them is meant to look like a dog, but not like a dog you'd ever want to meet. As far as adding content, let's, let's disregard the pet for now. As far as adding content to Escape Room, um, currently there is only... Um, the, what is it, the uncooking spell skill? Sorry, um, Evil Bob's Island, where you have to catch and uncook fish for him, yeah. and Prison Pete, where the balloon animals come from themselves. Right. There was going to be a third one where you went to Bridgelum and helped the Duke of Bridgelum <laughs> uh, reassemble his cows that adventurers have killed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was cut because um, it was described as looks like a bloody abattoir, and that's a lighter version of what the iron actually said. <laughs> yeah, that Just one was spinning uh, cow parts with all the gory bits showing spinning on your screen and you had to identify which bit was the others. Yeah. yeah. Mm, okay. All right, that answers that. Next question. We never had pets from that either, although the <laughs> ideas are brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> um, getting back to the priority poll, Fizz asks, based on the recent results from the recent priority poll, um, what do you have planned for old school? Uh, recent results, uh, blah, blah, like I said earlier, we've got a meeting tomorrow to discuss the results. Got lots of nice data. I've made a nice little spreadsheet with uh, combined it with the levels of every player that voted so we can have a look at what different people voted based on their levels and whether their, their total level, their in game wealth, their amount of time they spent in game so we get a good look at what, everybody's, uh, what everybody wants. So, uh, there we go. Oh. I was waiting for data. Sorry. Yeah, yeah data. Yeah. Yeah, Slightly embarrassing thing, we forgot to stop the poll yesterday, so I only turned it off this morning. <laughs> I'm that, I'm sure that would be a problem. Yeah, I'm sure that's um, fine. But yeah, no, so we've got lots of, we need to talk about it first, and uh, like I said, we need to talk about it, come up with some ideas and plans surrounding that, and then we need to take it past the various levels of corporate stuff, and then we'll come to you and tell you what, what we'd like to do. Okay, Hopefully fine. you guys will go, yeah. Perhaps a better question for next week then, after we've done that, um, but okay, obviously... Well, yeah. One of the one of the highly um, voted for topics was high level quests, was mm. it, or was it just that's, questing that's in general? The, it's fourth yeah. most important thing, I think. The solo content was also up there, mm. um, so players are asking if you, have, if you have anything already planned for those two topics. Got ideas, but that's about it, really. I suppose, you know, it's 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 hard to say without talking to everybody because I've got my ideas. John's got some that he's not sharing. Yeah. So he wants to surprise us all tomorrow. There's there's definitely a few, a few different. Directions, so you mm. could go with, especially with quests. We could carry on our own old school way. We could try to carry on RS3 way with quests. We could have a PDC for your own design quests. There's a lot of a lot of different um, options here. So yeah, it'll be fun discussing this tomorrow. Yeah, I look forward to that. Yes, for this worth. Pretty much every developer on the planet likes writing quests, so we will have no objection if we can um, justify doing it. Okay. Uh, next question. Renatu asks, any specific date we might get to see the Jad Pet released? Probably a Thursday. <laughs> it's usually a Thursday. <laughs> um, You're not pinning yourself down, probably a Thursday. Well, I may not be the one writing it. <laughs> Gareth, when do you plan to uh, begin working on it? I'll begin working on it. Um, it depends when the job comes through and it's, it's polled, really. Has it been polled already? Yeah. Oh, okay, that's <laughs> it was one of the Slayer things we yeah. had last month. Right. I would great, expect yeah. to see it probably towards the end of this month. I wouldn't expect it to be early this month, looking at what we've got. Uh -huh. If it's just um, a jab pet, I could honestly just knock that up in probably mm. about two hours. It's not really 
a massive job. I yeah. think not the same thing as this year. No. I think he's got to build it first if he's going to do that. Yeah. Two hours would be quite impressive, though. Um, anyway. Yes. I, I can imagine <laughs> what more you can do aside from just shrink down Jad. Um, but if you want to make him just a little bit different. Bigger eyes, uh, cutie eyes. Yeah. yeah a lot of <laughs> thing is, if you Jad. shrink down a big model, then you start getting rounding errors um, with the shrinking. So it would not look particularly good. That's why we didn't give you a corp pet back then and gave you the dark core instead. Because we didn't have the same graphics budget as we do now and um, we couldn't make a corp pet that looked very good. There was um, this idea as well that if you shrink a pet that somehow the polys magically disappear and don't really need that many polys in such a small space. So it's just a, a lot easier for me to make something like that. And it'd be nice to kind of have a version that looks like a, more like an infantile Jad as opposed to just a, a big solid Jad that looks like a replica, which doesn't really seem to fit. So yeah, kind of like Hellboy with his big sort of like arm as a baby <laughs> sort of thing. So you can have like his huge arms and like a smaller body or something like that. We do like the Hellboy um, art style. Um, seeing a few people saying the um, the fire bats that you get at the very beginning. Oh yeah, the key thing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Those. Okay. All right. <laughs> Next question. Um, I am Seth asked. Um, well, he's actually just showing concern really with um, boss layer released. He's concerned that boss rooms will become overcrowded in every world. Um, and he's asking, would you consider the possibility of adding more private rooms similar to what you did for Kraken? We have no objection, although it's worth remembering that we offered additional um, capacity for fighting Dagnoth Kings, and that didn't pass. Yeah. The So for everyone who wants more access to the things, you've got to remember there's also people who want to be able to kill them, get the loot, and sell it for a decent price. And if everybody's got their own private Calphite Lair, um, Dagnoth King room, other bosses, etc., then the availability of the items goes up because the number of them being killed and dropped um, goes up. So it's not as popular as it might otherwise be just from the convenience point of view. Okay. I think it is a valid point that uh, with boss layer release, some of the bosses will definitely become um, more popular. Mm. But that's just the nature of the beast. That's just how it works. So you got to compete. Indeed. Okay. Um, Hoor asks, with more and more discussion of max capes, how will they deviate and, um, sorry, how will you make them different from RS3? So are we going to yeah. try and mimic their... Max capes, or I think um, we should just do something that looks like what people are expecting, not try and sort of reinvent the wheel. I think that's just what people want a max cape, they've got an idea of what a max cape looks like, so let's just give them that. Yeah, it's a better idea. Okay, definitely see how the chat reacts to this one. Um, it's a very controversial topic, especially for old schoolers. I think it'd be like more controversial if I tried to make something new just because there'd be so many people just. Um, having their own opinion of how it should look if we go down that avenue as opposed to a, a definite design that's already there. So When we first ever polled the, um, or spoke to the Max players about a Max cape, they wanted a pink one. That was the overriding thing. They wanted a pink one. I don't know why they wanted a pink one. They just decided the pink was a good colour to have. Oh. So maybe we should go back to that and create the very original one that they asked for when there were 300 and something Max players yeah. at that time. Okay. Would that be worth straw polling? Because it's only graphical. Mm. Should it be pink? Is that the straw poll yeah. question? Yeah, should yeah. it be pink should it be or pink? like the RS3 one? Really? Yeah. I'm seeing a lot of support for pink. Yeah, there is like a load, but... Wow, all right. <laughs> well, I was surprised. I mean, this was, this I, was something yeah. we asked the players about, what, five years ago? It must yeah. be when we opened up the Max Forum. Yeah. Because they wanted, they wanted a cape back then. I mean, it took a good, good three years to get it into Game Forum. Mm. Now we're in a position to do it much quicker if you want to. Yeah. So well, I just feel like if I got a Max Cape, I'd want to make it really cool, you know, like, I don't know, or pink. The thing is, like, some people would want it, like, really simple. Some would want it, like, a bit more sort of, like, lively and sort of creative looking. Yeah. Others would want to mix in between. So it's just nice to kind of keep it simple, give them what they expect. But the idea of turning it pink is enough of a twist to kind of set it aside from RS3s, I think. That'd be cool. It's, it would definitely stand out. So if you want to show off that you were a Max player, that's the way to do it. Um, cape. We will find out from the straw poll results, which you can vote on right now. Um, aside from that, let's go to the next question from Pizza for President, who asks, "Could we get in-game max hit dummies added to the range, mage, and warrior guilds? So these dummies would have three modes: uh, DPS mode would calculate your damage per second, max hit mode would tell you and show you your max hit, um, and the last mode, the accuracy mode, determines your your accuracy as a percentage. Obviously, these would not give XP." 
just for fun. You know, you have a cool outfit, you want to see what you can hit. Quite cool to do that whenever you attack anything, wouldn't it? Mm. I'll sort of show you sort of your, your DPS over as long time. As it doesn't drop anything. I mean, what I'm thinking is if you're fighting any monster anywhere, if it's showing your DPS over time and your highest hit oh, okay, in the last yeah. minute and that sort of thing, would be quite a cool thing to do. We wouldn't necessarily need a dummy to do it on. But just sort of constantly over time. I think what he's more asking for is being guaranteed your absolute max oh, hit. Oh, right, okay. So if I hit a dummy with a thousand hit points, um, with full Derox on one HP, I don't know what the max is, let's say 94, something around there, maybe, hopefully, geez, I really hope that's close. Um, <laughs> you know, you would hope to see that 94. Um, so yeah, we'll see what they think of that. So it not take some of the fun away? Do you think if you can guarantee you see yourself hitting a, a max hit on a training dummy that it's not as exciting when you do get a max hit? It's to compare out, like loadouts, right? Yeah, definitely. To figure out which which one of your setups is best. Yeah. Um, do I want to go with the strength amulet or the the amulet of fury? How big of a difference really is there in this max hit? Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of one hit, then you know, you make those decisions, or you simply do the, the maths yourself, and that's that. Well, I don't think anybody who ever tries to program it. We could do the maths for them on the. You could do the maths for them <laughs> on the, <laughs> on the, on the equipment okay. um, interface. So okay. when you equip the item, I'll tell you, max it, DPS, that sort of thing. For what it's worth, the DPS is controlled, well, quite mm. obviously by how often you splash rather than successfully hitting, mm -hmm. and the speed of the weapon, which is known, and mm -hmm. the max hit of the weapon, which is also known. The thing about the chance of you splashing rather than doing actual damage is that it depends on the monster's defence. Right. So um, if we stuck in a dummy with like low defence, then you might have a lot higher DPS than you would if you were fighting mm. something which had very high defence indeed. Yeah. I'm not quite sure what, what the kind of number they'd want to see out of that. I would imagine something with one defense, just the absolute max, um, but that's starting to get quite complicated. Mm. Well, it's, mm. it's also means that whatever the dummy tells you is the DPS you could get if you're fighting that one dummy. And it might also be true for people fighting, say, goblins around Lumbridge, but it would not be particularly representative of um, what you're probably going to go and fight on for training purposes. Right, it might give them false hopes. Um, we actually just missed the straw poll, sorry. It was 56 to 56% yes. for the um, the pink max cape, so. so... No one thought it was going to get that high today, let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was figuring that about. Um, so maybe we need to make half of it pink. <laughs> yeah. Half the pink inside pink. or the outside? Oh, that's a good point. That is a good Ooh, idea, actually. Inside. You can make the inside <laughs> pink, that sounds cool. And, yeah. And the other side can be not pink. Yeah, well, you could just do like you know how like some coats you like you get a magician's jacket that's black and the inside's got a red lining that style. Like Peter Capaldi's doctor, yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Ash so knows where I'm coming from. Yeah. Right. Uh, so yeah, you could just do that with the cape. Have the uh, traditional one uh, that's currently in use at the moment on the on the outside, and then just have like a pink lining on the inside. Maybe that's just an idea. I'm just riffing, guys. Yeah, I'm just riffing. Uh, I like it pink that. inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, next question, Zozo asks, um, so he says, spear stacking has become an increasingly longer, or sorry, larger problem, and it's discouraging players from taking anything valuable into the wilderness. Will anything be done to combat this? We pulled so, it, didn't we? Yeah, we this did. has come up over and over and over again. I think yeah. only recently, because recently a player actually lost an Ellie to it. Um, people are starting to express concerns that they'd like the ability to at least drink a prayer potion while they're getting speared. Um, mm. But again, it's extremely controversial. Yeah, I mean, we polled, I can't remember what the exact change we polled, but it was, it didn't pass. So. I think in all likelihood we polled preventing them from stacking when there's already one queued. Hmm. If we found a way of writing it so that they still stacked in accordance with the poll result, but you could do things like drink, your drink a potions, potion, yeah. maybe even eat while it's on you, uh, that might be possible. Mm. But it's not the nicest bit of behaviour either way. Yeah. Again, this has been something that's been part of the game since it came out. Um, it's a very big change. One thing we could do is with Clan Wars, where um, we give you all manner of toggle options when you go in, like whether the Staff of the Dead special attack works, um, we could let you choose for your Clan War whether the Dragon Spear special works. If we could find somewhere to stick the button on the interface, because it's a bit full. But we could do that. 
But as far as... It wouldn't help with the wilderness, of course, but yeah. um, it's been requested. Yeah. Okay, well, that answers that. Um, next question is from Roy, who asks, With the Abyssal Bludgeon, can it have a similar special attack animation as the Chaotic Maul? Um, so just, you know, heaving that thing over your head and smashing them on the head. I think give it a new one, just because it'll be... Um a new fresh weapon, so I don't see why we'd just like reuse it. I think um, it's, it's kind of, uh, I forget what I was going to say, no, no, give it a new one, okay, okay. keep it simple. <laughs> All right, cool. So definitely uh, some discussion we had there. I just realised... you want to act out for us? you want to act out the move? I haven't yeah. even designed the weapon yet, so I'd be like... Uh, okay, I've got it. <laughs> so maybe you've got it, <laughs> and you swing it, and then you go undercut. Up the jar. That's Done. nice. Yeah. I kind of like the idea of giving yeah, it some right. sort of trail, maybe. So it's kind of like some uh, visual effects going on there. As in you're dragging it on the ground, or no, it's sort of like a light trail or something like oh, that. Okay, that'd be nice. Or just some sort of like ooze that it leaves behind it in the air or something like that. That'd be good. Okay. Cool. Again, I'm just riffing. You. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've actually got a, we had a few questions for you, Gareth, but I mistakenly printed out the wrong sheet of questions, so. If I'm going to recall correctly, one of them was asking, do you have anything more planned for Zaya that you can tell us about? Yeah, sure. Well, the schedule at the moment is um, next week uh, we'll be resuming work on the Slayer updates. Um, so we'll get the graphics done for those in about two weeks. Then after that, mm -hmm. if we do manage to meet that deadline, it shouldn't be too difficult. Um, I'll be starting to work on Zaya again then, so will Alfred. And sort of like intermittently doing jobs that we get uh, pulled away from, just like the odd day here and there for like poll um, jobs and things like that. So yeah, uh, probably two weeks, then we can start working on Zero again. Awesome, that's exciting. Okay, well, let's go to the next one then from uh, Master Larry, who asks, with Black Chins and Dark Crabs being heavily profitable and fast experience, Ents really fall, fall pale in comparison. Um, can anything, sorry, can you consider reviving, or revising, geez, how much XP they give or a buff to the amount of logs slash nests to increase activity? So Ents haven't really been terribly popular do you think they deserve it? Don't have a problem with it. I mean, um, we would want to make sure we don't go and um, devalue woodcutting. Yeah. But yeah. then mm. having one of the better trading mechanisms be in the wilderness ain't a bad thing for me. Yeah, it definitely comes with its risk. So. I mean, the whole point of Ents, <coughs> trying to think how, what were we put them in there, it was to get the. the, wilderness. the, 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 the would cutting people in the wilderness to do a bit of combat that way, so there was actually a benefit for people to be killing them. Mm -hmm. If they're not being killed, then obviously we probably ought to look at that. Okay. Because uh, that's what they're there for. Right. It's got an easy bit. fix, it's just mm. getting it right. Yes, and knowing whether we have got it right. Mm. That's right. the next thing. Um, Rogue Reaper asks, uh, will Old School ever see something like a loyalty program? It might do. I can't see it being popular. I mean, loyalty program in so far as loyalty points that RuneScape uh, 3 has, I can imagine what most people would equate it to. I don't think that would go down particularly well. Um, you, know, you could do sort of a, a you know, I've, I've, I've been member for X amount of time, I get stuff, but I don't think that, that will go down particularly well, really. It, yeah. It's not very old school. I mean, yeah. if the players really 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 wanted it then well we wouldn't refuse point blank but it seems a very old thing for them to be asking for mm -hmm. the only way i would see it passing is even still a tough time uh, if it was a strictly cosmetic and represented something like the the they're called the year capes that showed you how long oh, you've yes. been playing so how long mm -hmm. you've been a member um similar sense is that you know some people are supportive of those those ideas but uh yeah certainly as an item mm -hmm. There's anything more than cosmetic, that's tough. Yeah. I mean, I do like, you know, the emotes and capes you get for having been around five years, ten years, mm. etc. Fifteen years, maybe one day. <laughs> um, but um, not, but they, they weren't meant to do anything. Mm. Okay. Just show off, look, I really have been here this long and I can prove it. Well, we were yeah. talking about having the NPC that you can talk to to find out how long you've been. Yeah, that's right, Hans has it. So yeah. like there's, you already can show off on there as well, you know, if you're streaming or anything, so. That's true. There are other ways mm. of showing off how long you've been playing. Okay. We can even make Hans, that in. yeah, we can make Hans actually shout how long yeah. you've been around when you talk to him, mm. but just an option for 
Now tell everybody, and she he just shouts your name to, so that anyone nearby can see just how old you are. Yes, yeah, so if you drag someone over to show, look, I have been here this long. <laughs> I can prove it. Look how efficient I am. Um, similar to in terms of tracking your status, um, any idea when we might get to see an adventures log? Okay, not anytime soon. I can't imagine we've got GE pages still being worked on there, mm. a good couple of weeks away. Um, it's all about playing with the data, uh, importing the data. Can Sorry. I have data? Yeah. Uh, we can a data dedicated stream. We can cheat it so it looks like um, it could be accurate, but I'd rather put the effort into making sure it's, it is properly accurate, but we don't know how much work that is yet. So, so yeah. Anyway, to answer okay. your question, not any time soon because GE pages are really quite important. We've got a whole other bits, a few bits and bobs for the web team to do. Adventurers log on a web page, as players would expect it, aren't necessarily going to be that beneficial to the game as a whole, so we might need to think about other ways of doing it. And there's um, all the stuff that Ian has to do to make that possible as well. So it's probably not going to happen anytime soon. All right. I'm sure they appreciate that yeah. more than a simple no. I know that from the web team, we want those GE pages, of course. Mm. And beyond that, I would like the news, the old news posts on our website to be visible somewhere, because yeah. at the moment, you can guess the URL for an old news post, but it's quite difficult and yeah. kind of silly that we don't have a page listing them. And also, there are some changes to web polls, so when you're voting on the website, um, there's quite a few things could be improved about that. Mm. Okay. So they've got a fair bit of work to do. All right. Um, interesting question here from Dr. Zoidberg, who asks, what are your thoughts on breaking the fourth wall in old school? He is giving an example of the town crier um, knowing about Twitter. So he says, I prefer the game to be as separate from the real world as possible. Well, I don't know if that's a fourth wall, but uh, I mean, I understand it where he's coming from. Mm. I understand we, where he's coming from. But we do got, shout out when we do our live streams. I mean, yeah. what it's worth, the town crier was chosen not just because he's standing in a few villages, but because he stands there and uh, if you talk to him, he says, Hear ye, hear ye, player moderators are a big help to Jagex or something like that. Mm -hmm. So he was kind of put in to break the fourth wall already, which is why we didn't mind making him advertise Twitter stuff. That's a fair point. Okay. But I'm not going to keep doing that kind of thing if we can avoid it, because I also like the game to be a mm -hmm. fantasy world and not have people wandering around it talking about websites. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't say that's too intrusive, um, seeing as how this is the first time it's come up. Anyways, um, Hat asks, could you allow the GE to take coins out of your bank when buying an item? Bit lazy kind of reminds me of the coin pouch. Is that what the player actually said? No, that's, okay. <laughs> that's, that's, that's your comments here. Um, I think it is too close to the coin pouch to, yeah. to really do it. Um, well, what are your thoughts on the coin pouch? I don't have a problem with it, but I do feel that players like the idea of having coins in their inventory because that's the way it's always been. Yeah. And although the coin pouch is nice not to lose coins or get scammed for coins or get killed in the wilderness for coins, um, it's it's that extra step too far, yeah. as it were. You know, it's it's always been coins in your inventory and they're a thing that you hold, you have to deliberately think about, whereas as soon as it goes into a pouch, you don't. We could also spend a heck of a long time trying to implement one, because any code in the whole game that refers to coins mm. would need editing. I was around when, um, I think it was, well, I forget which mod it was who implemented it last time, but it wasn't a small job for him. Mm. and. Um, there's a lot of co code in the game that's fiddly with coins, trying to work out whether you've got inventory space if you to buy an item if you spend your entire stack on it. All of those would need editing. Pretty, it would be a pretty difficult job for each of them. Um, so if we did it, we could be we could spend many weeks doing nothing but that. And then of course it all needs testing as well. So it does. Okay. Testing's good. Mm -hmm. um, got a bit of a personal question here from Hoof Hearted who asks. Rather than a typical Q&A question, what's the next thing the mods would like to see added into the game? Anything in specific you'd really like to work on next? I'd like to finish the XP drops since I've started. Okay. What we talked about earlier with the um, construction update. Yeah. I mean, that was um, what we talked about in my interview, and yeah, it's definitely something I've been excited about since then. All right. And other things I've pitched for that. Okay, Matt? I would like to see in game more data. myself time, more data, yeah. Um, <laughs> apart from that, I would say that was red. Um, pure armor, I think. Yeah? Yeah, stuff okay. purely for pures. 
I'm a little bit similar. I'm going with the uh, the PvP armor and weapons. We're just, we're just gonna skip Gareth. It's okay. Getting a Gareth kind of pulls extra polygons. What do you want to What do you want to work on next? <laughs> I would like uh, to see the floating castle of House Arceus over the uh, Lake of Souls. That'd be cool. You'd like to see that or work on it? I'd like to see it and work on it. Okay. And not in that order though. I'd probably have to work on it first, then see it. Probably. I'd probably <laughs> see it, yeah. Okay. All right. Back to a more serious question. Um, Rudy asks. Can you fix the inconsistency of attacks following you into the safe areas in the wilderness slash PvP? This is one we were talking about earlier. <coughs> yes. At the moment, the rule with damage is that if you leave the wilderness um, for t through whatever means, be it teleport or walking over the buffer, um, the damage does not follow you. Now, um, it's been somebody on Reddit points out that this is inconsistent because a person who dealt the damage still gets the XP. And yeah. That's because XP is assigned when the damage is dealt, even though the damage may cancel before it hits you. Not a lot we can do about that, and I think it would be, we'd be ill-advised to try, because um, to change that, we'd have to make the XP get assigned at the point when the damage is dealt, which would mean that all the ways people predict their drops by looking at the XP counters wouldn't work anymore. I think that would not be a popular move. So... Um, as it is, damage is cancelled if you leave the wilderness. It didn't used to be. That was changed in like late 2006, I think. Mm -hmm. The reason it was changed is that people who've teleported out of the wilderness and then found that the damage followed them, well, they would consider that shouldn't be the case because they thought, I've escaped, I'm safe now. I've teleported to Camelot and the damage has somehow magically followed me and I've died. Jagex, fix it, this is a bug. On the other hand, a player who says, well, I dealt that damage fair and square, just the fact he's gone across the map a bit shouldn't mean that he gets away from it scot-free. Right. Um, Jagex, this is a bug. It's probably better if we go with this side rather than the other one, though, because the other's pretty darn harsh, especially as some teleport animations are not exactly quick. And while, it's, while you're teleporting, you can't do anything about damage stacking up on you. It's, it definitely seems to be the case of, if it happens to me, I'm going to complain about it, but if, if I get to do it to someone else, don't worry about it. So. And also the fact that the edge of the wilderness at the south end where the ditch is, there's those two tiles adjacent to the ditch which are not wilderness. So you become safe by stepping into them, even though the ditch is still a couple of tiles away. Now that we could change to make it dangerous all the way up to the ditch, if we didn't mind that people jumping into the wilderness would be attackable before they, can, they finished landing and couldn't do a thing about it. Which is... Not entirely desirable, which is why the buffer zone is there. Okay. Um, <clears throat> sorry, it's just stupidly hot right now. I've got another question for Gareth. Okay. Um, can we see more textures used in games? I did find your questions. Oh, okay, you printed them. Okay. Cool. Um, textures, if they're used <laughs> over... <laughs> this is so <laughs> needed. Sorry, go on. Okay, cool. Uh, textures, if they're used in game, tend to look quite repetitive and tiled um, when they're used on large walls. Uh, we intend to use some more on props uh, going forwards. Uh, that way you can just have things that draw your attention in the room if there's something that needs to be uh, collected or triggered, perhaps in, in some sort of task. Um, but as for like using them uh, on buildings, I think uh, old school does better when it just uses polygons. And I think it looks more stylized. Um, it tends to look quite confused to me uh, stylistically when we see textures. Uh, so yes, in, on smaller models, no on large environment models. Okay, it's fine, I'm not judging you. I really hope, oh, it's the most <laughs> masculine fan I could have found, by the way. I just really hope this isn't interrupting There was a book written in the uh, late 20, uh, early 20th century which um, detailed how you would try and, uh, and pick up men with uh, fans. It was obviously meant that's, for women at the time, but I thought exactly I'd put that in there. That's exactly where I got that yeah. from. Yeah, all right. But I uh, <coughs> just thought I'd share that with, uh, with everybody. Thank you. It was believed to have been uh, written in the uh, uh, 18th century, I think, but it was turned out that it was a complete lie fabrication. Somebody sold it in the early 20th century. This is a book from 200 years ago. Okay. Wasn't they wrote it. Completely boring. I'm sorry. I'll shut up now. Carry on. <laughs> Moving on. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. Um, <laughs> let's go to this one from Heisenberg, who asks, could you tell us in order which, pe which pets are owned um, it from most to least? No. <laughs> you take any guesses. No. I'm going to say the Chaos Ellie pet, number one. Least owned. Uh, Did we make that one first? Maybe. 
I'm not sure. I would say the mole pet is the least. Because I know someone's been trying to get that really? for about a thousand kills and hasn't managed it yet. That chompy pet should be pretty uncommon. Mm, that's oh, that's true, a good yeah. one. Yeah. Okay. Is that water open and is someone drinking <laughs> it? I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't what happens when it gets break break blindingly hot. You're going to bite this one as well. It's unbearable. It's really hot. We just, we just this, can't this cope for the heat. Oh no. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. Um, <laughs> I don't believe that. <laughs> The humidity in here is insane. <laughs> no, I, can't, I can't open it either. Just I've got my own hands. Alright. Oh. I loosened the floor. Thank you. That was a, a <laughs> noble sacrifice. Well, uh, <laughs> Hydration. Yeah. Alright, we're going to get out a couple more questions before we finish this. Before we die, yeah. That sentence is so wrong. <laughs> Ash has just wet himself. <laughs> okay, okay. Garrett's hydration. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, all right. Um, <laughs> mm. Carry on. Yeah. yeah, okay. Whoops asks, with the peak option added to uh, the boss rooms, could we also have the ability to view the boss's health? Um, he's an Ironman expressing concern, mm. saying, I don't want to touch this boss, this mm. one else has already hit it. Seems logical, doesn't it? Could we show them the health of the boss? Probably. Um. The code for finding the NPC in the room is not always reliable because it won't find the NPC if it's busy in certain ways. Yeah. Um, so you might click on it and it won't be able to find the thing there at all and tell you it's not there or couldn't find it. And then you go in there and find that it is jolly well there and in fact someone's fighting it and they've just been doing certain attacks on it. So we probably couldn't make it work reliably, but we could give them a kind of hack job. Okay. Might um, be okay. Mm, I'm not a big fan of doing kind of hack jobs. <laughs> yeah, if it's not a guarantee, yeah, it's a bit more concerning, I suppose. We'll go to one last question. This is actually a big one, so this is another widely asked. Um, I thought it's worth, um, Mr. Hammer 23 in the chat was saying that the Scorpia peak is pointless. Now, the thing about Scorpia is that, um, well, she's not really a boss anyway. We normally classify her as a demi boss. And when her cave got a peak op option, Players points out that this makes quite a difference to the way PvP works in that area because you can see whether there's people inside to attack or not. And PKs can hot worlds outside Scorpius are there and easily peek in to see whether there's players inside to attack. So um, given that Scorpius is not technically a boss anyway, um, we were persuaded to remove that feature to um, restore the PvP behaviour to what it used to be. At the time, we couldn't actually make the op vanish straight away, but we could make it stop giving information about how many players are in the cave. So it's a kind of quick job, I just made it say, it's a cave with scorpions in, um, which isn't very informative. Now that we've had another game update, we have the ability to actually <laughs> remove the um, uh, op altogether. So rather than having a useless op that tells you it's a cave of scorpions, I think we've been able to just remove the peak option altogether. They're laying into poor Mr. Hammer there, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. You had to yeah. say his name, didn't you? Well, <laughs> to show that we're paying attention to the stream. He's probably sitting at home crying now. You know, after being Hopefully. The abuse he's sorry, gone Hannah. Um, right. Very sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that made up for it. All right. Uh, last question here. Let's go to... Um, when do we get to see a preview of the Abyssal Bludgeon reward from the Abyssal boss? Um, I'm going to make that... Um, this, like I said, there's this two-week period where I'll be working on the, um, the Slayer update uh, next, starting from next week. So within that two week window, so within a fortnight. Okay, awesome. Cool. Uh, it will be one of the last things I make, just because it's more important to get, you know, all the like larger assets. That sounds a bit sinister. Out. One of the <laughs> 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 All right, is that about it then? I, th I think we're done. I think uh, so. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, music emotes out next week. I'm going to be making it and sorting it out. Ooh. And the case week. The cape is going out too. Uh, yeah, I can do the cape as well. Cool. That's a quick pause. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, fair enough. Absolutely. Okay. That being said, go ahead and give the stream a follow if you enjoyed. We'll thank you for watching, and we'll catch you next Thursday. Cool. Bye bye. bye.